I'd like to welcome you to this open chat with Daniel, the co-founder and CEO of Angreso, a Colombian BPO company. And he will explain a little bit more about uh, the country, the market and about himself. We started our, our company Angreso in 2010 uh, in Colombia um, as a kind of a bridge builder between foreign companies and investors and the Colombian market. Uh, back in 2010, Colombia was a wide spot on the map. Uh, hardly any company uh, invested in the country because of its bad image. But uh, since then, we have seen an amazing uh, transition um, with Colombia becoming the second biggest economy in South America, offering a lot of opportunities. And what we do as as company is we facilitate market entry to our clients uh, in Colombia. So we offer a, a suite of services, uh, legal, tax, uh, recruiting, back office, and basically everything a, a company needs to hit the ground running and actually uh, unlock this potential that, that can be found in, in Colombia. Could you explain us why do foreign IT companies choose Colombia to do business in the first place? Many IT companies from North America, Europe, they choose Latin America um, because of its proximity to the United States. We are in the same or similar time zones, uh, cheap labor, um, pretty good infrastructure when it comes to IT, but hardly any IT company or BPO company um, establishes a presence first in Colombia in the region. We all know uh, Brazil is, is by far the largest market, but once a company has established a presence in Brazil and is looking to expand within the region, it will pretty, pretty naturally uh, look at Colombia next. And not just because Colombia is the second biggest economy in South America and the third largest in Latin America after Brazil and Mexico, but also because Colombia has what I mentioned before, it has transitioned into a very modern economy. It has a pretty well-educated young population. It offers uh, ease of doing business. It's like Colombia as a country is much less protectionist, for example, uh, as, as Brazil, uh, to give an example. So establishing a legal entity is relatively easy. Like we set up uh, companies for our clients within one to two weeks. Uh, including the bank account. And uh, as I said, the education level and the salary levels are relatively low. Uh, like the education level is high and the salary level low. And this offers uh, the perfect uh, kind of natural ingredients, let's say, for IT companies and for what IT companies are looking for. Um, there's, there's another question uh, which many of our clients also always ask, which is around the, like, what is the legal and tax situation for foreign companies and how, what is it like in Colombia? Colombia is, is very open to trade. And that also means that as a foreign investor, you have the same rights and obligations as a national. So you can uh, buy uh, or you can, you can hold 100% ownerships in, uh, in a company in Colombia. You do not need a local shareholder in your company. And there is this legal form that is called the Sociedad Anonima Simplificada, which, which is kind of a, a limited company where you have no minimum capital requirement. You don't need a, a, a tag like an audit, a financial auditor, and you have no uh, minimum number of uh, representatives that uh, in, in the executive uh, committee of the company. So. There are legal forms that are very easy uh, to establish and, and very easy to comply with. And as a foreign investor, you have no restrictions whatsoever um, in comparison with a local uh, investor. That sounds really, really interesting. And what is the best approach to establish a presence in Colombia? Had you asked me this question, Four months ago, before the Corona pandemic uh, hit, um, my answer would have been might have been slightly different than to what it is today. Usually, a lot of companies they expand into a new market by establishing a legal entity pretty soon uh, after arriving in country. 
But now we live in a world that is um, changed. We, we are heading into an uncertain future. So I think what has changed now is that many companies uh, than before uh, are looking for more agile, more flexible ways on how to test the market before fully committing to it. And that means maybe not establishing a legal entity at the beginning, but first using different methods that, that allow you to, to, to start doing business. IT companies that want to do, do, that are looking for software developers, they can hire them as freelancers and not uh, full-time employees. Or we also offer a, another option that is called a PEO, that is a professional employer organization, where we kind of we can contract or, or employ someone for you and serve as so-called employer of records. But this person will be a de facto employee of yours that allows you to pay the whole uh, package of social benefits, etc., and build a more long-term relationship with those employees. So, so there are uh, kind of preliminary, more flexible ways to establish a presence, and then legal entity might still become an option, but maybe in a second phase of your market expansion. That sounds very insightful. It's definitely about risk hedging, and I guess you guys are one of the ways we can make that happen.